Hey guys, this is Anthony Morganti from anthonymorganti.com. Welcome to Mastering On One Photo Raw 2018. In this video, we're going to take a look at the color adjustment panel that's found in the develop module of On One Photo Raw 2018. To begin with, on this image, I did some basic tone and color adjustments. Then I added a bit of luminance noise reduction, and I did lens correction. Now, I'd like to add a little bit of pizzazz to my shot. And one panel that will really help you add a bit of flavor to your image is the color adjustment panel. And to turn it on, go up to show more and click on color adjustment. And those of you that are familiar with Lightroom probably recognize this panel. This is the same as the HSL panel that is found in Lightroom, and it does pretty much the same thing. And that is, it allows you to adjust a few different attributes of several different colors. Now, the way this panel works, first of all, is along the top, you'll see there, the, there are these colorful circles. And what these are are preset styles. They allow you to kind of get in and out of this panel relatively quickly. So if you have an image that has a lot of foliage in it, you could click on this preset style and it will adjust a few different attributes from several different colors to hopefully enhance any foliage in your shot. If you have a shot that has beautiful fall colors, try this fall preset style. If you have a desert scene, click on desert. If you have a landscape image with an expansive sky, click on sky. Now to the right of that is a little drop down and there is one preset style in this drop down that isn't included with the others and that is green grass. So if you have an image with a lot of grass, click on that. Now one thing about these preset styles is you cannot stack them. So if you have an image with expansive sky, you can't click on that, but it's a fall and you have a lot of fall colors, click on that. It really, the fall will overwrite the sky. So you really can't stack these at all. But again, these are hopefully just quick clicks. You get in, get out. But the real power of this panel is what I mentioned. You're able to adjust three different attributes from several different colors. Now to demonstrate, I'm going to reset this panel by clicking there. Now if you look below those preset styles, you'll see that there's a number of color swatches. These are the colors that you're able to adjust. There's red, orange, yellow, green, aqua, blue, violet or purple, and magenta. So you could adjust hue, saturation, and or brightness individually for all these colors. And to demonstrate, I'm going to talk about what I typically do when I have an image that has a lot of grass in it and a lot of trees in it. And that's this image. What I usually do is I'll go to the yellow swatch and I'll adjust the attributes of yellow. And you can see when I click on any of these swatches, these sliders kind of change color to kind of indicate what color you're adjusting. So I'll go to yellow. Now usually I don't adjust the hue of anything. I use leave hue alone. But there are times, especially if I have a really wide angle shot of a expansive sky with mountains in it, the sky and mountains sometimes come out a little bit purple. So I will go to the blue and or purple swatch and I will adjust the hue of those so I could make my sky and mountains the correct color. I'll make the sky blue and the mountains if they're green or brown or whatever, snow capped, whatever, I'll make them more correct by clicking on either of those two swatches and adjusting the hue. Other than that, I typically won't adjust you. Some photographers like to use it for creative purposes. They like to make the sky purple or they like to make the grass more red or something. So they'll adjust the appropriate color swatches you to something that they're doing create, create in a creative way. So for my adjustments on things like this, I won't touch you, but I will go to yellow and I will turn saturation of yellow. And what you'll find, those of you that photograph a lot, is that green grass has a lot more yellow in it than it has green. And when you adjust saturation, you'll see if I move it all the way to the right, it's making the green grass pretty much radioactive. If I take it all the way to the left, it's taking the color out of any yellow in the image. 
this is good for uh, selective color as well. So if you have an image and you have, let's say, a, a red kayak in a lake, and you just want the red kayak to have color and nothing else, you would go to all these individual colors and take saturation all the way down, except for red. Red, you would probably turn saturation up a little bit. But back to my image, what I typically do is I'll bring saturation of yellow up a little bit. Then I'll take the brightness of the yellow and I will bring that up as well. So I'm making the yellow a little brighter and a little more saturated. So there is before and after. Then what I'll do is I'll go to green and I will take the brightness of green down. So in my opinion, that gives me a little more depth and a little more dynamic look to especially the grass. As you can see, there's before and there's after. So instead of having this relatively evenly toned uh, row of green grass, it has a little bit more character to it, a little bit more yellow and a little bit darker green. So you could go before, after, and you could see it affected anything yellow in the shot. So these bushes, uh, there's a tree up here. Also, even a single tree, some of the leaves might be more yellow than some of the other leaves. So it kind of added, a, to me, a little more character to those trees as well. There's before and there's after. The other thing I will often do with a landscape shot is I'll enhance the sky. Now you can't really see it here. There's not much sky in this shot, but I will do what I will do is I'd go to the blue and I take brightness down. You'll probably see it in this fountain here. So I'll make the blue sky darker. So in this case, it brought the blue of the fountain down. Now, as I mentioned, I don't really do much with you. So, but you can adjust again, any of these three attributes of any of those colors. Above this at the very top is a range slider. That is how narrow of a range do you want that specific color to affect. Meaning, for blue, if I move this range way to the left, it's only going to adjust things that are really saturated blue. If I move the range slider to the right, it will start to get a wider range and it will start to get colors that aren't necessarily blue anymore, but are close to blue in the color spectrum. Might be able to better see this with yellow. If I move it to the right, it might start to in, um, encapsulate more colors that are close to yellow. Nothing in this image probably is very obvious, but if I move it to the left, right, no, not really. But you get the idea and you could experiment with the range slider in your image. Either a Far left would be a very narrow range of very saturated, um, only saturated colors of the swatch you're using will be affected all the way to the right and you'll widen that range a little bit and start um, affecting some colors that aren't necessarily saturated that specific color. So that's typically what I would do. I encourage you to experiment. You have all these different colors you could experiment with uh, from magenta, you know, purple, whatever, whatever might be in your image. Now, to below that is targeted adjustments. You could see that there's a dropper there and then there's a drop down. And with the targeted adjustment, you could adjust the hue, saturation, and brightness of specific colors in your image. Now, to demonstrate that, I am going to reset this panel. And what I'll do is you could see it's on red. But that doesn't matter. You don't have to click on any of these. We're going to be targeting the color right on the image. And to do that, I'm going to click saturation first because I want to turn up the saturation of yellow. So I'm going to pick up the eyedropper by clicking on it. And you can see now it's active. And my cursor turned into a plus sign. So then I'll click on something that I know is yellow. And you'll see that the cursor turned into a double horizontal arrow. Now I'm leaving the left mouse, left mouse button clicked in and I'm dragging my mouse to the right. And if you look over at that yellow saturation slider, you can see that it's moving to the right. If I drag my mouse to the left, that saturation slider is moving to the left. Now I want to turn yellow saturation up a lot or a bit. Now I'll go to this drop down and I'll go to brightness and I will click on that 
eyedropper again. I'll again just go to something I know is um, yellow. And I want to bring brightness up. So I'll click down with my left mouse button and drag to the right. So you see the brightness slider is now moving up. Now I want to bring the brightness of the fountain down. I want to make the fountain darker. So I will click on the, I have it on brightness on this drop down. I will click on the eyedropper. Now look at, if you look up here, you can see yellow is active. Don't worry about that. As soon as I click on the blue um, fountain, and start dragging, it automatically switches to the blue swatch. And as I move that down, it's moving the brightness of blue down. So that is a targeted adjustment. You could come in here with that eyedropper and target a specific color that is in the image. Now, if you do these adjustments, now I, I say I often do that to yellow. I bring saturation and brightness of yellow up. And then I bring brightness of green down, and then I bring brightness of blue down. That is what I often do. I could make a style of my own for that. And to do that, go to this little drop down and go to Save New Style. And I'll just call this uh, my landscape style. And I'll click Save. Now I'll reset this. If I want to come in here and I want to just quickly use my preset that I often do, I'll click on this little drop down where it says more and you can see right at the top is my landscape style. And again, whenever I hover over any of these, the uh, it, uh, on one gives you a preview of what will happen. So I'll go to my landscape style and it just automatically applied my landscape style. Now I didn't do anything for green in this specific one, but you get the idea of how you could create your own preset style. Now, one thing I never demonstrated on these things, you could delete a style or you could upstate a style, update a style with current settings. What I'll do is because I didn't do anything with green, I often like to bring green brightness down. So then I'll go to the s'more and I'll update the style with current settings. So it's going to take my landscape style and update it. It's warning me, do I want to do it? Yes. Now I'll reset. And I'll go to this drop down. I'll go to my landscape style. And you can see green now is down. And brightness of the yellow and saturation of the yellow is up. And brightness of blue is down. So there's my preset style that I created. Again, I could delete it if I wanted to. Delete a style. It will ask me which one. I only have one. And I could delete it. So it's not there anymore. So that's how you could create modify and delete any preset color adjustment styles that you may ha have. And that's how you do um, targeted adjustments. And like I said, it's a really powerful panel and you'll be able to add a lot of, um, of pizzazz to your shot, for lack of a better term. I encourage you to experiment with it. That's really the only way you'll learn. Uh, come in here with all these different swatches and see what happens. Uh, you'll see like uh, magenta, you know, I could take magenta and there's nothing in the image that's magenta, so it doesn't do anything. Stuff like that. So experiment with it. I think you'll find that it will become a panel that you'll often use, particularly with landscape shots. Thank you, everyone that watches my videos. I truly do appreciate it. I'll talk to you guys soon.